Hey Ross here with TrueCut CNC and uh, this video we're going to go over the cam portion of uh, Cut2D. So to do that we'll, we'll create a new file. We'll start from scratch. We're going to click on uh, create new file. We're going to go single sided uh, 48 by 28 or 4, uh, 8 by 4, uh, 4 by 8 sheet so 8 by four in the height. Uh, material surface for a Z position and uh, zero will be our lower left corner. So if we hit OK. Now for this we're going to just uh, do a vector conversion. So we're going to click on this button up here, import uh, bitmap for tracing. And we're going to go to our collection of stuff that we've downloaded and uh, pick something that looks pretty cool. Let's go with this guy right here. Okay, let's zoom in on him and get a better view. So, uh, okay, there's our image. We're going to select him, and we're going to hit this button right here to trace him. Okay, and there's our trace. So we can adjust our threshold up and down to uh, to eliminate uh, anything that you might not want to see. So you see if we lower our threshold, some of the watermark comes through in the photo. So we want to increase our threshold to make all that go away. Right about there. Now we hit preview. And that's looking pretty good. So we hit apply and then close. And then we can select on the bitmap. Okay, and then hit delete. And the bitmap goes away. Okay, so now that's pretty small. So uh, what we're going to do is select it, click on it, move it down to the lower left corner. I'm using the mouse wheel to scroll or to uh, zoom in and out. Okay, now we're going to size it. We're going to click the size button right here. And it's uh, see how big it is right now. It's only an inch by two and a quarter or so. So let's say we want to make it... Um, uh, 18 inches tall. Click apply. Okay, and drag it back to the to the center, like that. Okay, now I could have uh, avoided dragging it back to the center. Let me undo that. Okay, there's our original right there. If I change the anchor point to the lower left and I change the height to 18, it maintains that anchor point at that lower left corner. Okay, so there's our there's our drawing. Now the one thing you need to pay attention to when you're uh, working with the cam portion of, of Cut2D is the start points because the start points on these vectors is where your uh, start point's going to be for the plasma toolpath. So what we want to do to do that is go into node edit mode. To do that we're going to hit the N on the keyboard. Okay, right above the space bar. And now when we click on these, see they don't turn to a dashed line anymore. Now we now we can edit each individual node. Okay, so the, see that green point right there, that's the the start point. That's where our start point would be uh in in our toolpath and we don't really want it there maybe up here would be better so to move it up here what I'm going to do is hover my mouse over that line and then hit the P on the keyboard P is in Paul and it changes that start point up to there and this is all one continuous uh, start point uh, this is Let's see, we're going to cut that. This is actually going to cut out, so let's hit the N again. And let's get rid of this, because we either need to bridge it, or we need to get rid of it. And we're going to get rid of it, so we don't need it. Okay, anything else that we need to get rid of? I don't see anything else. We should be in good shape. So hit the N again. Gets our start points going. We already moved that one. 
Okay, let's move this one and we'll move him up to here. Hit the P and again hit the P. That one's okay. Hit the P. And hit the P. And again, hit the P. Every time I hit the P, it moves that start point. Start point is the green line. Okay, we have a bit of a disconnect right there. See that right there? Uh, this is actually going to disconnect from here. So what we could do I think what we'll do is we'll draw a line right through here like that. So let's go back to hit the end to go back to uh, our regular mode not node mode. And now uh, what we're going to do is take this and we're just going to move him a little bit closer like that. Okay, now if you remember when we went over node editing, uh, I'm just going to use the weld command to weld those two together. Just like that. Okay, so now really that antler kind of flows through like this. Okay, so what I want to do is draw something. I'm going to use the line tool. And I'm going to draw something like... this let's move that a little bit further to the left like that then we, we actually want to connect that I'll show you why because we're going to use the weld tool now let's join that hit join so we're going to collect, just click on this, click on this. And let's see what weld does. I'm not sure what it's going to do. That did exactly what we wanted. Good. Okay, so now let's uh, go back to node edit. Hit the N. And check the start point there. That one's okay. That one's good. That one is okay. We did that one, we did that one here, so... Hmm. Okay, that one moved on us. Where'd it go? Well, that star point moved on us, and I can't, I can't find it, so what we're going to do is just replace it right there. Okay, good. Okay, now hit the N again, get us back to normal mode. And, okay, we're good to go, so... It's 18 inches tall. Our, our start points are where we want them to be. Uh, we've hit uh, node edit and change, uh, changed our start point. So uh, now what we're going to do is come over here to toolpaths on the right side. Okay, click the pin button right here. That pins it open so it won't keep disappearing on you. And then we're going to hit this uh, profile toolpath button. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is select your tool. So if you remember back when we set up Cut2D, we loaded a tool database. Well, when you hit select right here, that tool ba database is going to come up. So we're going to say we're going to cut this a 45 amps, 12 gauge, right there. Okay, now all these numbers, you, there, there's only one number here you can change, and that's spindle speed. And that is the percentage of the feed rate that this particular two tool path is going to run. Okay, so if you have spindle speed set at 100, it's going to run 100% of what it's set to out on the machine. If it's set to 50%, it'll run at 50%. So for this comp for this video, we're going to set it at 100%. Hit apply. Okay. Okay, now this is going to be an outside offset, and since everything's on a single layer, uh, Cut2D is going to automatically uh, make these inside contours, okay? So we're going to do an outside offset. We're going to do uh, put a lead on it. 
and we'll do a circular lead it's just going to be a fairly small one and no overcut okay and then we'll name the toolpath deer one now the selector you're going to hit the selector button and this allows me to select by layer so we only have one so what I'm going to do is click on layer one and this comes up if we had multiple layers which will be the next video this is a really handy handy tool for selecting uh, layers so now we hit close the entire thing is selected we hit calculate okay now this is telling us that our lead-in was a little bit too big to fit in some places so it either made it smaller or it omitted it completely okay so we can go back in and look and see where that see what went wrong there okay so right here this opening was a little bit too small to fit a lead so it stuck the lead over here in the corner okay so the way we could deal with that we could either uh, use a uh, a tool with a smaller uh, with a smaller curve in fact we couldn't even cut that we could use a, a tool with a smaller curve or we could cut this with no curve okay so let's do that let's cut it with no curve so we're just going to take the uh, take the outside offset off and we'll leave it on the toolpath and uh, we're going to do the same thing with uh, with leads but we're going to make them smaller let's go point 0.1 and point 0.2 and hit calculate okay there we go so that that's a little bit better I've got that cutting now I've got everything cutting this was too small still too small to fit a lead uh, that's okay but everything else looks good and this should cut fairly well okay so now that we've got that done we hit close so again we'll go over that again let's edit that toolpath the only thing we selected was our tool our vectors outside inside or on you're always going to select climb cut uh, and our leads and that's about it um, if you want to go ahead and set your start at uh, we usually leave that at optimized start points uh, corners uh, we usually have set to sharp external corners and if you use a line lead I believe that becomes active uh, order we go left to right and we don't do anything with ramping uh, so that's the only thing really you're going to change your lead your vectors your machine inside outside and your tool hit calculate now we hit close so there's our toolpath there's only one toolpath uh, so what we do is we hit the save toolpath button that's right here hit uh, now remember when we loaded the post processor we told it to save true cut CNC as our default so if you did that then um, you'll see that uh, this uh, our post processor will come up here as the default uh, so now we hit save toolpath and uh, find a folder to put it in that's it that's our toolpath so it's saved now uh, in the next video uh, we're gonna we'll uh, we'll cover more advanced stuff like uh, multiple layers and things like that